What's going, everybody? Shalom. Welcome back to Each One Reach One. I appreciate you guys joining me today for another, another lesson, another study. All right. This is another one, man, put on my spirit to, to talk to the people about because we gotta, we gotta be drawn near to our power. When we draw near unto Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, they draw near to us. We take a step towards them, they take five, seven towards us, right? And so, you know, it's kind of hard to, to know exactly what you should be doing if you try to gauge or if you try to follow the, the example set forth by many people who call themselves elders and leaders and, and so forth of the people, shepherds of the people, because they're, they're not really walking according to the scripture, not all of them. They're not really, you know, trying to emulate Yahweh Shai at all. They're not really trying to get to know our father. They're not really trying to get to know Yahweh Shai. They don't really know either one of them. And for those who, who claim that they do know them, they are in the greater error because that means they're being willfully disobedient and rebellious. But before I, I continue to ramble on, <clears throat> let us begin this, this video properly by giving all praise, honor, and all glory unto our power, the most high Yahweh, and the name is of, of his beloved son our savior, our king, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kadash. Once again, thank you for joining me, everybody, because you didn't have to. You could be anywhere doing anything, but you're here right now, spending a little bit of time with your brother, man, trying to, trying to make, make steps in, right, in the righteous direction, all right? So, yeah, we have to look to Yahweh Shai as our example, right? He's our example. He tried to show us things so that we would understand what's pleasing to the Father. The things that he did are the things that pleases our Father. So he showed us how to please our Father, how to have a relationship with our Father, how to, how to reconcile with our Father and be pleased and, and to delight him, right? He showed us these things, but many, many seem to, you know, spit in the face of Yahweh Shai and the things that he did and seem to, to look down on, on the things that he did because they look upon it as weak and, you know, I could never, that's their attitudes, I could never, or I would never. And you know that's their attitude because it shows in what they do. There's a reason why Yahweh Shai told us, you know, to turn the other cheek when our on our brethren, you know, if they if you smite you on the cheek, right? It's the reason why we were told to forgive, right? When Peter asked, how, how often should I forgive my brother, right? He basically told him to forgive him an infinite amount of times. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's pretty much how you sum up what, what his response was. But you ever, ask why you ever ask why he said to to love those that that persecute you and despitefully use you and and hate you and to do a good turn to those who who wrong you why tell you to to pray for them to love them still did you ever wonder why did you just think it was just a bunch of soft ass uh conversation a bunch of soft talk from a man that was a softy Right, you think it was just a bunch of uh, 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 um, bamboozling, a bunch of lies placed in the book by our enemies in order to make us docile and soft and weak? Is that what you thought? See, you err not understanding spiritual things. You're fleshly. You're a carnal man and a carnal mind, so you can't get it right. But there's a reason. There's a reason, and many are showing that either they don't understand the reason. They, or they don't care, or they understand the reason, and they don't care, right? So let's get a little bit, a little bit of scripture, you know. Let's get Hosea chapter six, verse six. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of the Most High more than burnt offerings, right? I desired mercy 
and the knowledge of the Most High more than burnt offerings. The knowledge of the Most High is something we should covet. That's what brings us to him. That's what causes reconciliation. And this is what many people either are not doing or they're doing it and they're deciding to be willfully ignorant or willfully rebellious, as I continue to say, all right? So mercy is a big deal. Why? Because as much evil as we had done, he showed us mercy. And he would not allow you to try to be above him. If our father and our Lord above all things, everything that we did and all the ways in which we offended have shown us mercy, who are you? Who is man to say he doesn't have any mercy in him, that he doesn't have to show anyone mercy? How can you decide that someone who our father and our Lord have shown mercy to isn't deserving of mercy from you? How are you to say that? Who are you to say that? And if our power wants us to have mercy, he wants you to have mercy on people because that's a, that's a way that people perceive his mercy. When we listen to him, if I when I listen to him and I show people mercy because he wants me to show people mercy, that's them getting the mercy that he wants. He wants them to have mercy. So he makes me give it to them. And since I'm an extension of him, I do his will. I act in the way in which he would act. I do what he wants me to do. I act in his stead. I am his avatar. I am one of the members of, of his body. Right? Right. See, I understand this. I understand that I'm called to a higher office. I'm called to be better than everybody else. Not the same, not to try to match your energy. I've done that and I've grown. I've learned the error in that. I was wrong trying to match people's energy and trying to do unto them as they did unto me. That's what I was doing because I was fleshly. I was carnal. I still had pride and ego in the way. And there are so many people who have pride and ego in the way so they can't really act as an extension of our power, which means they aren't an extension of our power. Because if you were an extension of our power, you would act as they would because they come and make their abode with you. And that would cause the, you to act correctly. When their spirit comes into you, it forces you, it changes you, and it causes you to act as they would. That's what happens. So you can tell those who are not one with our father and Yahweh Shai, those who do not have the Holy Spirit. You can tell, you can see them. It's evident. Mercy is a big deal. Those who do not show mercy will not have mercy shown to them. That's the guarantee. That's what they were told. That's what we were told, right? Matthew chapter nine, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. So again, so-called men of the Lord, who are you to not show any mercy unto man when the heavenly father himself and our glorious master himself have shown mercy unto man? No servant is greater than his master. If you're saying that you don't have to show mercy and our master does, uh, well, I'll just combine two words, and our master does, <laughs> how can you say that you're a servant? You're not. You're trying to be greater than our Lord. You're trying to be greater than our father. You're making yourself greater than they. No mercy. You will not be shown any mercy. Remember that. Keep that same energy. Come judgment day. You're good. This is going to be required of you. He says, for I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, he's come to call the righteous. But you men are walking around here like the, the law keepers, the, like the law pushers of old, trying to, you want to be the one to make declarations of who's righteous and who isn't, who aren't, right? Who are sinners and, and who aren't? Who's worthy? of being taught and who isn't, who's worthy of receiving godly instruction. Listen to that. They think that godly instruction and the word of God should be reserved for, for, for those that kiss their butts, 
for those who they deem worthy. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine kind of arrogance it takes to, be, to think that you sit in the place of God, to think that you sit in the place of our Father or our Lord, who is the door. He's not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If you're not greater than your, than your Lord, you're supposed to be doing the same thing. You're not supposed to think yourself to be above anybody. You're not supposed to think yourself to be better than those who you call reprobate. Those who you look at and say, you're a two-third, you're a heathen, you're a Gentile, you're, you're this, you're that, you're devil, you're whatever. You're making yourself greater than our Lord. He will have mercy. And because he will have mercy, if you are an extension of him, you will have mercy on those that you come across and that, and that are in need of mercy from you because that's you being an extension of our power. That's you giving them the mercy that he requires you to give them because he wants them to have mercy. So he put you there in order to be the one to give it to him because if he didn't want them to have mercy, he would allow them to be ruled over by a cruel messenger, a cruel Lord. He would allow the wicked spirits to take hold of them. He will allow a wicked spirit to come across you and to do all manner of things to you because he doesn't want he doesn't want that person to have mercy. See, because you weren't merciful, now the Lord is going to send a cruel messenger. He's going to send one of those wicked spirits on the left hand side in the form of a person to come make sure you don't get any mercy, and then you aren't going to get any mercy. Come judgment day. But you hear what I just said, though? I just made a reference, right, to the spiritual realm, right? Right. See, because this is the understanding that many seem to forget or to not understand that gets in the way of their greater understanding. This is the reason why Yahweh told you to forgive, to forgive, have mercy, have mercy, be forgiving, have mercy. Why? because man's goings are not his own, right? Man's goings are not his own. Matthew 12 and seven, just again. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye, but if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. If you knew what he meant by this, you would not have condemned the guiltless. What is he saying? People are condemning people who are guiltless because they don't understand spiritual things. See? The spiritual man understands spiritual things. Those who are carnal do not understand spiritual things. So they're missing key understandings, which means they can't be men of the Lord. They can't be his representatives. They can't be of the elect. They can't call themselves holy nor righteous. Ephesians chapter six, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of the most high that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You hear that? Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He didn't say the wiles of men. He said the wiles of the devil, the tricks, and the cunning of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the cunning wiles of the devil. Why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and here is the key, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What did he say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your issue isn't with man. Your issue is with the principalities, 
the powers, the rulers of darkness, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Because when people do evil, they're doing it at the, the behest, under the control of wicked spirits. Men's goings are not their own. This is why we're told forgive and show mercy. Because you, if you understood that people are controlled by what's going on in the spirit world, then you would understand you would not hold them. You know, you would not take personal the things that they do. And this is one of the hurdles we have to get over. This is one of those modules in the Most High's training course that you got to pass in order to graduate to the next stage of your development and righteousness. It's to understand, to help you, this helps you conquer pride and ego. This understanding helps you conquer the pride and ego involved with dealing with people when they do you wrong. This helps you to get over it, to get past it, to let it go, to forgive, to be merciful. When you understand that it is the wiles of the devil that you are contending with, that you are not wrestling with, wrestling with that man or that woman. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are fighting a spiritual battle, fam. A spiritual battle. We are spiritual soldiers, those who are of the host of God, those who are of his army, those who are really of the body of Yahweh Shai. We are his soldiers. We're supposed to know this and have a better grasp on this knowledge, this understanding than anybody else. Than anybody else. Okay? This is how you conquer your flesh. This is how you bring your flesh under Subjection. This is how you learn to rule over your spirit. You got to spiritually grow. You got to get this understanding. This has to be something that you know, like you know, like you know, right? You have to. But there's a lot, of, there's some more good meat in here. So let's, let's get what else is here for us since we're here. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. This is what we're called to do. This is our commission, right? Because we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places, you have to take unto you the whole armor of God, not par partial armor. See, because the partial armor leaves you naked. It leaves you susceptible to attacks. You're still vulnerable. You're still weak. You have areas of weakness. But when you take on the whole armor of God, you are thoroughly protected. You're strong. You have no weaknesses. Right? Take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Because you haven't done all if you haven't taken on, taken on the whole armor of God. You're trying to do it yourself. You're trying to fight your own battles. You're stuck in pride and ego and you can't let things go. And you're thinking like a carnal man. You haven't done all to stand. You're susceptible to fall. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. With what? With truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is a protective breastplate. And your feet shod with the preparation, the preparation of the gospel of peace. The preparation of the gospel 
of peace. Where did the gospel of peace come from? It came from Yahweh Shai. Why do you see all of these men in Israel lacking a peaceful spirit, but calling themselves men of the Lord? Their feet are not shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which means what? They have not taken unto them the whole armor of God. They have not been completely transformed. They are not being led via the Holy Spirit. They have not went into a spiritual cocoon and come out a spiritual butterfly. No longer the old caterpillar, the old creature they once were, but the beautiful creature that emerged after the transformation. They have not had their feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Too much warring within Israel. Too much hatred. Too much animosity. Too much jealousy. Too much bickering. Too much envy. Too much spitefulness. Too much. Too much pride. Too damn much ego. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you have faith, the shield of faith, that shield of faith makes you stronger. Our Lord is our weapon. He says, I will avenge. He told you he will avenge you. Avenge not yourselves. Vengeance is his, he says. If you have faith that he will deal with your enemies, then you put the pride and ego to the side and you let him do it. You trust him to do it. And you walk accordingly the way he told you. You have no need for the pride and ego. But pride and ego gets in the way because you have not faith. You have not the spirit of our Lord. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What? And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Right? And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, not like a coward, boldly, strong, to make known the mystery of the gospel. Because to those of us who truly seek him, truly love him, who trust him, we're given the secrets so that we can make known the mystery of the gospel. Many think, they have the mystery. Many think they have all the understanding, all the knowledge, and all the wisdom, but they have been fooled. They have been fooled, and they're, and they're lacking, and they're drowning in their pride so that they will never come to the truth because they believe they already have it. They will never learn the true mysteries of the gospel because they think that there is nothing for, else for them to learn. And what they learned of their elders and apostles and so forth of old, that that is all there is to know, that they have the 100% truth, and that anything outside of that is going off. It makes you a bug out Israelite. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, as I am. I am an ambassador in bonds, spiritual bonds, beholden to this lot working my labor of love on behalf of my Lord in service to my people, my brethren. Because a servant of the Lord is supposed to serve the people. You exist to be a servant of the people, not to be above the people, not to allure yourself as being better than the people, not to condemn the people, but to serve the people as an ambassador in bonds, an ambassador of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. 
And there it is. I speak boldly as I ought to speak and nobody can make me cower. Nobody can take me off this square and make me talk any different or make me feel any different because they've been around longer, because they've been awakened longer, because they've been in the truth longer, because they studied under so-and-so and so-and-so. I don't care. I'm not a wit behind any of your chief apostles and elders. I come behind and nothing I have not been left in the dark. I am not, not anybody's flunky, nobody's lackey, nobody's minion, nobody's boy, nobody's yes man. Nobody can tell me, go run over there, do such and such, or no, don't do such and such, or no, you can't like so-and-so, or no, don't watch so-and-so, don't listen to so-and-so, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't consort with so-and-so. Can't. I have one master. He's giving me instructions. And, and a part of his instructions is to be ruled over by no man. We're all supposed to be brothers. So what are you guys doing? Right? What are you guys doing? But again, before we get out of here, let's highlight it again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what we're supposed to do. Yahweh Shai walked it like he talked it, right? He showed by example, and we're supposed to follow. See, the example, Yahweh Shai knew that Judas was wicked, but he still made him, made him one of his apostles, knowing what he would do. He still made him one of his apostles and he didn't hate him. He didn't talk crazy to him. He didn't treat him poorly or take what was coming personal. He understood that Judas had a role to play. In the father's plan, that man's goings are not their own, that everyone has a role to play. There's something that everyone has to accomplish in the most highest movie, the grand scheme of things. Everybody has something they're supposed to do. They have a mission. They have a lot that falls unto them, right? He knew not to take it personal. What is the example? Don't take it personal what you go through, what people do, what people say. Again, look to Yahweh Shai. He knew what Judas would do, still chosen. Knew what Judas would do. And he still treated him with love. He still loved him. He still loved him, fam. He still treated him like one of his men. Knowing all the while what was to come. Didn't go running his mouth to everybody, telling everybody, hey, you know, you know, uh, Judas is going to betray me. So this is how, you know, don't be loving him. Don't don't treat Judas fairly. Don't. He didn't tell anybody any of that. He didn't let he didn't even let anybody know. What Judas was going to do, he gave them a heads up that somebody was going to betray him, but he didn't even say who he gave them a hint. But he didn't even say who. He didn't tell on him. He didn't try to get everybody to rally around him and to hate Judas because he hated him. He didn't try to get anybody to do that, but yet men are doing that in Israel. They're walking, they're going around and they're trying to make people hate other people because they hate them. They're trying to make you feel the way they feel about people. They're trying to make you upset with somebody because they're upset with somebody. This is what they're doing. But it's not supposed to be so. How shy didn't do it. So we're not supposed to do it. But let's go to John chapter 12 and let's go and, and, and read a little bit. Verse one, then Yahweh shy six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Yahweh Shai, and wiped his feet 
with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor because he didn't love the poor like that, but because he was a thief. Yahweh Shai knew he didn't care for the poor. Yahweh Shai knew that he was a thief, but he still had the bag, still let him be the one that held the money and bear what was put therein. See, still, why? Because he had an assignment. He had something he had to accomplish. And just because who he was and he had this character flaw, he still has something he had to achieve. And he wasn't treated foul because of what he was going to do. Right? But then said, Yahweh Shai, let her alone. Against the day of my burying house, she kept this. For the day, for the poor, always ye have with you, but me, ye have not always. Right? So this was an instance where you got to see Judas, Judas's character. If you were watching the movie, right, and you saw this point happen, right then at this point, this is where you're going to start side-eyeing Judas, and you're going to start expecting fuckboy, part of my language, behavior from Judas. You're going to start expecting, right, wickedness. You're going to start expecting less than righteous, less than upstanding behavior and conduct. From Judas. This would gave you a peek into his character, and you'd be like, mm, I don't know about this dude. I don't really care about this dude, but I know there's something coming down the line involving this dude doing something unscrupulous. I know it. Right? And we're supposed to, again, we're supposed to be discerners, right? Discern the spirits. Watch. Watch people. Learn how to tell. Learn how to see who people are. And when you see, when they reveal, when they reveal their character, trust them, believe them, or believe what you saw, believe who they revealed themselves to be, and then be smart enough to deal with them wisely, right? Wisely. As wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Get yourself away from them. Right. But look, again, Yahweh knew the character of Judas and he was still trusted with the bag. He was still loved, cared for, respected from, by Yahweh And he didn't tell anybody else anything that would cause them to treat Judas in any kind of negative way. He didn't do it. Again, this is an example for us to follow. If no servant is greater than his master, who are we, fellas? Who are we to walk around here acting the way that we act in this world? We are not acting like men, the coming of the Lord. We're not, not acting like that. So we all have the hurdle of letting go of pride and ego, understanding this stuff and overcoming it because stumbling stones are opportunities for righteous men to grow and for wicked men to be revealed or to be destroyed or both. You gotta understand this. We gotta understand this. All right, so that's enough. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that here. There's no reason to bring out any more scriptures. There's other scriptures that I can get, but, you know, point made. Point made, I believe. There's too many examples in this book to show us how to conduct ourselves, to show us how to live. If you want to know whether or not a man be of the Lord, just watch him. You know them by their fruit. Think about Yahweh Shai and say, will Yahweh Shai approve of this person? Will Yahweh, what will Yahweh Shai have done? Let that be your, your measuring stick. What will Yahweh Shai do? On a case-by-case -case basis, 
when you when you encounter situations and you're not sure what you should do, ask yourself that question. What will your Shah do? That's your barometer. That's your measuring stick. And let that be your, your guiding light. Let Shah be your guiding light, not men. Don't follow what men are showing you or telling you. You follow what Shah shows you and what he told you and what he tells you via the Holy Spirit. I pray that you guys were edified by this and somebody grows because of it. All praise, all honor, and all glory on my behalf. It should be on everybody's behalf, but I can't speak for everybody, but I'm gonna. On behalf of all of us down here, my Lord, on behalf of all of creation, we give all praise, all honor, and all glory Unto you, Father Yahweh, and to you, Master Yahweh Shai. I'll see you guys on the next one, fam. Y'all stay tuned. Shalom.